I, uh, sometimes I'm baffled as to why we sit here. We debate both the vertical and the horizontal uh, bills in terms of how the funds are divided and sent to the counties or between the two arms of government. Then the money in the constitution is quite clear that it's supposed to be sent to counties. The constitution say that money shall not be delayed or reduced at all. It has to be sent immediately. So I pound the question. We are here, all of us are here supporting this bill so that our counties can be able to get money. But do we ever ask questions as to why we should not penalize Treasury for delaying the disbursement of uh, money into counties? A, a couple of weeks ago, Madam Speaker, we invited the Cabinet Secretary in, 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 in charge of Treasury to explain to us why he's violating the Constitution when it comes to the issue of disbursement. You know, I'm happy that this Senate is taking its work seriously. We are passing all legislation. But I think it's about time that we should have a conversation of how we can be able to safeguard the money that is supposed to go to our counties. You know, CRA is doing a fantastic job. And I'm happy with the steps they're making. But they have to be consistent. I've noted, Madam Speaker, that the ceilings for the executives of most counties, particularly my, exec my narrow county, has gone down from the previous year's ceiling. And when I inquired from the committee, the committee indicated that these are county's staff establishment. There are a few things that have changed. They have been able to share with CRA. And CRA realized that earlier on, they had overestimated their ceilings, budgets, and now they have come down. Line the CCs will no longer be drawing money from the executive budget. They'll be drawing money from their line ministries or, or department. But as speaker, I think as we debate this, and we know counties are up in arms saying, you know, we would like to be given money for this, we'd like to be given money for this. I think it's important that we explain to the counties that there are a few things that have happened. For instance, the salaries for the governor and the deputy governor has been adjusted downwards. It is important for them to be able to know that under full disclosure. Number two, when they realize that their ceilings have been reduced, it is important for them to realize that it is not the Senate that reduced the ceiling, for instance, of Narrow County Executive from 607 million in the previous financial year of 2022-2023 to 545 million 667 287 in the financial year 23-24. For Nairobi County is the one which has heavily been affected. Before, their ceiling for the executive was 816 million. Now, for this financial year, it has gone down to 640. We might get daggers being thrown at the Senate by the county government saying that we have reduced their ceiling for the executive, but it is imperative for the county governors to know that CRA relied on the information that they submitted on verifiable staff establishment. Staff establishment. So, Madam Speaker, as we debate this bill, what are we going to do to ensure that at least these counties get their money and their money on time? I don't believe, Madam Speaker, that any county should have anything to do with pending bills. I think it behooves this House to be able to build the capacity. And I'm happy that ceilings for county assemblies have gone up to build the capacities for the county government so that they can, be, they can, they can budget for the money that they have. Most counties have this very bad habit and I think they are copying it from the national government, that you pass a budget, but before the financial year is over, you've carried out about four or five supplementary budgets. I think it's about time for us to become realistic and to realize that the money that we have is the only money that we'll have in that financial year. One thing that I'm always very happy, Madam Speaker, and it's good for me to share with my uh, new colleagues in this, financial, in this uh, parliament, is that the last parliament 
played a critical role in ensuring that money which is being sent to county governments will never go down. It will always go up. Although this year the money going to counties actually dropped down because of uh, the inflation in the country, at least we, we tried to some extent to make sure that it doesn't go down below 370 billion. I hope, Madam Speaker, that in a couple of years when we'll be reviewing the formula which is relied by CRA to be able to disperse the money, because I know at, at this point they are looking at different, and Madam Secretary, you'll allow me to grab my notes. They are looking at different parameters given that they have taken basic equal share to be about 20%, population index to be about 18%, land area index 8%, Agricultural Index 10%, Health Index 17%, Road Access Index 8%, Urban Index 5%, and Poverty Index. I hope that now, Madam Speaker, instead of just relying on this, we can go back to the earlier school of thoughts of putting a 2% incentive for accountability. I've noted with great concern, Madam Speaker, and I don't know why the committee did this, that the committee noted that now, for instance, the audit committee meetings have been reduced to four meetings. That has got two consequences. One which is a direct consequence to the auditors, the internal auditors in the county, and another one is an intended consequences, whereby in counties, the issue of accountability will be something which would be left for the auditors now to come out and point out and say, you should have done A, B, C, D because the internal auditors will not have enough money to be able to sit in and audit the accounts of the county to help that county maintain accountability. So I think we need to ask ourselves, are we just sending money because of, you know, of population, because of uh, poverty index, because of roads access index, or are we also following this money to ensure that this money is actually utilized effectively? Today, Madam Speaker, if you look at all the 47 counties, there's not a single county that, done, that doesn't have pending bills. And you ask yourself, why do these counties have these pending bills? The counties have pending bills because of these bloated budgets. Narrow County is receiving 9.1 billion, which is slightly above what it received in the last financial year, or around 8.8 .8 billion. But now, I think for us, and where we need to sit down with this county assembly is to ensure that they only, first of all, budget for that 9.1 billion, they remove the recurrent expenditures and the development expenditure, and then now they shift all their burden into the own source revenue game. We have a huge capacity and capability of raising more money, but the problem is this, we do not like to build systems which enhance accountability. If you build systems that are clearly defined by our special plans, by our uh, own source revenue streams, Madam Speaker, our counties will not be crying. Our counties will not be saying we are shutting down because money is not coming. They will be relying on the own source revenue. So I think, Madam Speaker, this Senate today ought to start considering these own source systems that can be able to ensure us so that when I sit in this desk, I can go into my phone and I can say how much is Narrow County collecting today. Most county governors will not want that. In fact, Madam Speaker, when the controller budget attempts to get information about how money is being spent in the county government, the county governors go up in arms. You know, they say, no, you are trying to control us. We are not trying to control you. All we are calling for is accountability. So, Madam Speaker, this money, although it's a very minimal increase from the previous financial year, I do hope, Madam Speaker, that the money will actually go to counties. I do hope, Madam Speaker, that these county governors, and I'm happy that we had so many senators who ended up becoming governors, um, I hope that they will only budget for what they receive. 
although the budget process has got to come in first, but I, I hope that they can budget for the money they know that they'll be able to receive and only commit to, the, to those expenditure. Finally, Madam Speaker, I want to call upon the county governments to work closely with the Commission of Revenue Allocation, work closely with the assemblies. Now that I've noted that most assemblies have got their budget ceilings increased, they work closely with the Council of Governors and closely with Treasury. So that eventually, after the end of this parliament, county assemblies will have their financial autonomy. The only time that county assemblies would be able to oversight county governments is when they have their financial autonomy. But the moment they continue relying on county governors, they will all continue singing this song of saying, we want World Development Fund, just like the way we sing here in this Senate. We want our Senate over, over, Oversight Fund. We forget our primary job, which is oversight, so, or, or, or which is legislative. So, Madam Speaker, I thank you for, for that, and I hope that uh, we are not just talking here, that Treasury will prioritize. Will prioritize the money that is supposed to go to counties, and maybe before I sit down, Madam Speaker, something else that, that just crossed my mind. Now that we have the consolidated fund, why can't we now start thinking about amending the PFM Act and then having a big kitty and dividing the, all the money that we get into three? So we have a fund where we put all the money that will go to county governments, the other fund where the consolidated fund, and also the parliament kitty. So that in parliament... We don't have to keep on relying on the exchequer releases. In fact, the Treasury, even if they want to release the money, will just look at our accounts and say, okay, they have money in their, in their accounts. Let me release to them. Narrow County uh, or Kajiado County, whichever other county, how much money is in the entire overall kitty for counties and how much of that overall kitty is your share so that counties can be able to get their money. Otherwise, Madam Speaker, I thank you. Uh, Senator Maruma.